So have you been interested in writing for Chicken Soup for the Soul? How about building your platform, finding those open doors uh, for personal stories that you have? Well, today I'm re reality coaching for writers where we offer no fluff, just the real stuff. We have author Tracy Crump with us and she can, she has published multiple times. Tracy, how many times have you published with Chicken Soup for the Soul? Well, I have 22 uh, original stories and then one was republished in another of their books. So you could say 22 or 23. Wow. When did you start publishing? How did you get started writing for Chicken Soup for the Soul? Well, oh, well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, you well, there. <laughs> I, I tell people I really never planned to be a writer at all. I had no interest in writing. I, I wanted to be a nurse, and that's what I was years ago. Worked in ICU for five years, and then I was a stay-at-home mom, which was really my heart's desire. Okay. I ended up homeschooling, which was also something I never planned to do. Um, but then after the, my sons graduated, uh, I... I felt God leading me to um, to write some things that I thought might help other families. So I did, um, got into writing. I uh, published, I attended a, a conference, uh, the Florida Christian Writers Conference, and I met a couple of editors there, magazine editors, mm -hmm. and they were interested in what I had to say. So I published a couple of stories in our, or a couple of articles in um, national magazines and um, so I, that's kind of where I was when I joined a writer's group and the lady heading it up, uh, her name is Mary Lane Wade Coke. She emailed me one day and she said, chicken soup for the soul has a book coming out from the nurse's soul. Oh, She, she knew I had been a, a nurse years ago and she was a nurse. And she said, why don't you try submitting something? And I thought, they're not going to publish anything. I write, you know? <laughs> So I just kind of let the deadline pass. I didn't, I didn't try submitting anything. And she emailed again and she said, chicken soup has extended the deadline for the nurse's soul book. Why don't you try submitting something? And I thought, well, you know, it was so long ago. I can't really think of anything. And so finally thought of one story and then I thought of another mm -hmm. and I ended up sending five stories to that oh, book. Wow. They published two of them. Wow, great. Uh, so I was really excited. And that just kind of started a string of, of acceptances then. Well, that leads me to a question. How quickly, now, I'm sure when they see your name now, they, they are quicker to respond because they know they can trust your writing. They know that you know what they're looking for. But in the beginning, did it take long for them to get back to you? With a yay or a nay, or and do they, do they uh, get back to you if they're not accepting one of your stories? Uh, they they don't. Um, okay. They just have so many submissions. They they get from three to five thousand submissions on average well, per book, per, per and so book. they just cannot respond to all of them. So they say if you haven't heard within two months of the book's publication, then you you pretty much know that they they did not accept your story. Okay. Um, yeah, but uh, it really has changed a lot over the years. I, my first story was published in 2007 okay. and uh, Mark uh, Canfield, or no, I'm sorry, Mark Victor Hansen and Jack Canfield were the owners at that time. They were the ones who originated it. Right, right. But in 2008, they sold it to Amy New, Newmark, who is now the, the editor. Okay. And so things have changed a lot. Um, and, and really it's a good thing because they used to post uh, call outs for, for books that never came to fruition. So now you can pretty much count. They have deadlines. Sometimes they'll still extend those deadlines. Once in a while, they'll move them up. So I, I urge people to always check the, the website. I think um, you posted on your Facebook page recently that there was a deadline extension for, was it dogs or some pets? There, there have been several here lately. Okay. Yes, several of them. Mm -hmm. okay. And you mentioned that I, I have a, a newsletter that goes out and it includes story call outs for Chicken Soup for the Soul and, and other anthologies. Oh, great. So, Can we, I'll, if you'll share that with me later, I'll make sure to share it with our listeners. If sure. that would be okay. That would be that fun. Would that would be great, great. Tracy. Yeah. But as far as, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. But, but your original question that I never got to, I'm sorry. Uh, is, is that how, how quickly, and it just really varies. A lot depends on if they do extend the deadline. 
sometimes you'll hear within, you know, maybe a few days or it may be months. So it just, oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And so how many titles again do you have with them? Well, it's 22 stories. Some of them I have multiple, multiple stories in, in a book. I think it's 18 different books that the oh, stories are. And how has that helped people become aware of your your writing and has it helped you in submitting articles now for magazines are you still doing any of that um not like I was um I don't uh in, in fact I haven't even been able to submit too many stories to chicken soup because I'm doing a lot of editing okay and then I had a, a book come out last year a devotional book and and I'm working on another devotional book so it's well, share and, that title with us <laughs> Okay. your devotional book okay it's called health healing and wholeness devotions of hope in the midst of illness mm. and it's based on my nursing experiences and my caregiving experiences whoa when that, is that first published tracy it published in june of 2021 so last oh. year and really when it came out uh we were in the middle of an intense caregiving season with my mother-in-law she had turned 100 in april and then 12 days later had a heart attack. Oh. And so we had, we had to put her on hospice and she, we, we were cared for her throughout the whole summer. And so it was a, it was a very, it was a very different launch. Let me say that. Well, <laughs> um, because, and, but I would imagine launching, you know, so closely to the uh, onset of the pandemic that this book would have really uh, ministered to so many people finding themselves in similar situations, um, you know, needing healing, praying for loved ones for healing. And so I would think that God must have known that timing and just preordained to have that book come out at that time. I, I think you're right, because I, I when I first signed the contract, it was in February of 2020. And of course, the next month, everything shut yeah. down. And I, I thought, you know, health, healing and wholeness pandemic, wouldn't this be the best time for this to come out? Well, it didn't come out until the next year um, because of several, several situations. So I, I just knew he had a better plan. I knew that was his plan. Now, who, published plan. That? who published that for you? It was Crosslink Publishing. Okay. All press. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah. And so the experience must have been good because you have a second one coming out. What what's that title? Well, uh, it's we're, we've just started on it, and I'm actually going to have two co-writers. Okay, it's going to be a and, and I'll just go ahead and tell you because yeah, he's yeah, share it, it, share it with us. Diana Derringer is one. Uh, she's yeah. a writer from Kentucky, and she her husband had a brain tumor yeah. uh, years ago, and so she has cared for him ever since. Um, and then the other one is Craig Von Busek. Oh, yes, Craig. Yeah. Good friends. And Diana actually writes for Inspire Fire, which is a, a site that I help manage and um, oh. edit. So I've gotten to know her. And gosh, she has really suffered through some tough things. Yeah. And you can tell the depth of her walk with God because of that suffering, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And Craig, man, yeah. he, he's talk about a writer. <laughs> we That's connected. wonderful. Yeah, so, we connected in Kentucky when at the time he, I was caring for my parents and he was caring for his. And so we just kind of bonded over that. Yeah. And he said, you know, we ought to write a devotional book someday about caregiving. And so <laughs> I called him on it. <laughs> and he, wonderful. He's a writer, so we're excited. So that's great. Congratulations. Thank and you. so let's get back to chicken soup for the soul. So um, now, what is their format? Like, you should have this down now. So could you advise our, we're going to also link their uh, website. And I know they have a lot of great information there. But um, can you, in a nutshell, kind of say how they like the story to open, what the middle and the ending looks like? Sure. Okay. Yeah, well. I tell, I tell, we actually do, um, that lady, Mary Lane Way Coke and I actually do workshops on writing for Chicken Soup for the Soul now. I remember and, seeing that. Yes. Are you doing yeah. them virtual by any chance? 
Uh, we, not, not at the present. Okay. I have a course online though with Serious Writer. Right. About that. Yes. Yeah. So okay. that's something you can get now. Um, I will be presenting a workshop though at the Mid-South Christian Writers Conference next spring. So that's one, one place they might want to think about. Yeah. Um, but as in a nutshell, um, I, I tell people first that they are all about story. Yep. It's not an article. It's not a devotion. Chicken Soup for the Soul is not a Christian publication, even though they use the word soul. And a lot of people, right. that trips a lot of people up. Right. And we talk a lot about takeaway and that sort of thing and, and avoiding, um, avoiding testimony. That's one thing they have on their website. And we talk about what that actually means. But they're all about story. And they, um, one thing they say is they want you to start in, in the middle of the action. Okay. Um, and Amy Newmark, I've, I've been able to attend a couple of uh, little workshops that she has done before. And she says that so many people start with like an explanation. This is what I'm going to tell you. And she said, she calls it throat clearing. <laughs> and she says, just cut that out. And I, I've ha I have actually edited a number of Chicken Soup for the Soul stories. Okay. And I probably cut more first and second paragraphs than anything else. <laughs> so get right into the story. Um, and, you know, uh, keep, keep the action moving. Uh, but they want it to, they want it to have a takeaway. I say, if it doesn't, if it doesn't have a takeaway, it's not a chicken soup for the soul story. So it needs to, to make some kind of a point to be a chicken soup story. Good. So, well, and, you know, that takeaway, we want that in every fiction book and every nonfiction book and in every blog post, you know, it's always about your reader, right? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so anyway, they, um, uh, one thing too that I tell people is to, to make it just a narrow, narrowly focused story because so many people try to write too broad. And one of the things that they say in their guidelines is we don't want your whole life story. We don't <laughs> want a biography. You know, it needs to be very focused. So I say, you know, if you're writing about your grandmother, don't tell about your whole grandmother's life. Tell about one aspect of your relationship, um, some personality quirk maybe that she had or some specific incidents that was either humorous or touching. Um, so focus in tightly on one story. It doesn't have to be long. Chicken Soup for the Soul stories are 1,200 words or fewer. Oh, Okay. Yes, and they don't have to be 1,200 words. I even say that, you know, if, if you write tightly, a six, seven, 800 word story is a lot of times, a lot of times better than a longer story. Well, so, and that's one of the reasons um, as a literary agent, I used to encourage my nonfiction writers to write to uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul, mainly because it teaches you that typewriting. It teaches wow. you to choose your words you know, and be more specific. And um, it's it's such a good skill set to learn um, mm -hmm. because it will help your novel writing as well as uh, any large book. You know, when you learn to choose your words well, um, the pacing is so much better in your books. Right, like right. Books. And so, conversely. Yeah, go ahead. And conversely too, you talk about fiction writing. You, you want to use fiction techniques, even in your nonfiction writing, to bring the story to life, too. I tell people to do that. Okay, great, great. Well, Tracy, what about, pick one of your stories and kind of share it verbally with us, the way you started it with action. Maybe that would help, you know, to give an example of how you start with action. Okay. Um, well, uh, one story that I really like is about my son and daughter-in-law when they were about to get married. Um, and she wanted to have an outdoor wedding. And so I went with her one day to a, um, a park, it was right by a city hall where she wanted to have the, the wedding. And so we were scoping things out saying, okay, we could do this here and, you know, a beautiful lake in the background and all this. And I said, well, what if it rains? And she said, it's not going to rain. She just, mm -mm, she wouldn't believe that. And so we talked a little more. I said, but you know, what are we going to do if it rains? No, it's not going to rain. I said, okay. <laughs> so she had to leave. And so I went into the city hall and said, you know, do y'all have any kind of facility here that if we have this wedding out here and it, it rains? <laughs> and so that's kind of, I started it in the action of we were there, we were scoping everything out. And then after she left, I went in and talked to them. And so they showed me a room 
And I looked at, it was kind of a, not a conference, it was a huge room, but it was kind of almost set up like a, a courtroom is the way it looked on one end. It was where the council men, members met. Okay. And I thought, oh, I don't know if this will do, but then I turned around and there were all these huge, tall windows looking oh. out on azalea bushes and beautiful trees. Oh, nice. And I thought, this is it. <laughs> and so we talked about that. Well, of course, it rained for a <laughs> solid week before that wedding. It was flooding. Oh. So we ended up having to, to use that. And then my takeaway was that, you know, I hope that I will always be able to be there for her. You know, if she needs somebody to kind of bring her back down to earth <laughs> and help her, you know, help her to realize that we have to, you know, sometimes we have to make alternate plans and, and still it was a beautiful wedding. So oh, that's a sweet, sweet story. Now, what was the book that was it wedding stories or was it? Yes, it was called what? Here Comes the Bride. <laughs> okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, now people can, your newsletter, if they um, sign up for your newsletter, you'll, you'll keep them posted mm -hmm. as what books are coming up that they're looking for submissions. Is that correct? Right, right. That's what the call outs are for. Uh -huh. And it will even give you a, a list of topics that you might want to write about. And that a lot of times is very helpful in sparking ideas. You know, you might bring up a memory of something that happened years ago that you might could write about or even yesterday okay. and so they're very now, is, it, is it topics related to that particular book or is it just okay yes yes to that particular book and they say you're not limited to these topics but here are some ideas you might want to think about writing on so yeah it's very helpful that's great well um I'm looking here at our time. I don't want to run out of time here. Um, what other tips did you do you like, you know, to share that might be a good takeaway for this particular session here that we're having? I want to encourage people to take check out your course and um, and also that conference. Tell us one more time where the conference is. And it's in the spring of next year? It is. It's in okay. March. I think it's the third weekend in March. Okay. It's called the Mid-South Christian Writers Conference. It's in, well, near Memphis, Tennessee. It's in Collierville, which is a suburb of Memphis. Oh, okay. This Great. This will probably be the maybe ninth, I think, ninth, eighth or ninth uh, conference that we've, I, I was a part of it. I was the registrar for several years. Okay. Having me though present, it's a three-hour workshop. Uh, that we'll do on chicken soup for the soul. A few years ago, we did a four-hour work, four, yeah, four-hour workshop, and one lady said, "I didn't." She said, "I'll be honest, I didn't see how you were going to feel four hours." She said, "But I haven't looked at my watch a single time." She <laughs> said, "This was great." So we do, you know, I'll do a breakout session and that sort of thing. Normally, I have a co-presenter, but this year they just wanted one presenter, so it'll be a little bit shorter than what we did before. But it, it's a lot of fun. We have a great time. So, do you actually practice writing? in the class we uh well we do we we I, I hand out a list of the upcoming books for chicken soup for the soul and then i ask them to come up with ideas for them uh so we start with you know at least you get some ideas going and then um, on my session my breakout session we kind of go through beginnings middles and ends kind of like what we talked about a minute ago and uh so they can they kind of get i ask them to, to write an opening paragraph and an ending paragraph so we kind of get started on on one that they can actually submit. These are all will be all be stories that are yeah. you know books that are coming up. So they get a, a start that they can actually submit. Oh, I can see where that would be so helpful, Tracy. Well, now how many books do they publish a year? Do you know? I think usually around six to eight books six a, to a eight. year. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I know from one of my clients publishing with them they get, um, they, you receive copies mm -hmm. of any book that you're uh, published in, correct? Right. And 10, 10 copies per okay. story. So if you have two stories, you'll get 20 copies, which oh, is wow. really nice. <laughs> yeah. You so you actually them. can do a, a book signing mm -hmm. with those books. Now, right. I know um, Barnes and Noble's carries the chicken soup for the soul books. 
And I'm sure Amazon does. I mean, they're the largest bookseller in the world. And whatever we think about them, <laughs> we need them. Um, how have reader reviews helped you? Um, I imagine they coach. Do they do any coaching for you on marketing the books? Ask you, you know, have little ways, things that they ask you to do to help market the books? Well, they do. They actually have a publicist usually will contact you. Their publicist will contact you and they will, um, if you will send them a list of like local newspapers and local TV stations and that sort of thing, they'll send a, a press release. Okay. Um, I haven't had many contacts from that, but I was on a, a news program one time about writing for Chicken Soup for the Soul. And I was supposed to be on another one, but the, the Pope preempted me. So <laughs> Well, not many people can say they were about the Pope. <laughs> right. Oh my. <laughs> that's a fun, that's a fun uh oh trivial I'm thinking of um trivial pursuit, the game, you know. That would be a good one for the Tracy Crump publishing game. <laughs> a little bit of knowledge there. That's fun. Um so what do you do to help promote the sale of the book? Well, of course, I post on social media, mm -hmm. uh, and then sometimes I have done some book signings in bookstores. Okay. Uh, of course, they don't they don't use your books; they use the ones that they have there. Okay. Uh, but it's a lot of fun to do that, uh, and I've done some at at um, uh, libraries. Uh, and in fact, um, in about a week or so, I'm going to do a little lunch talk at a, a local library, and I'm going to talk about the power of story. And so we'll, I'll have my Chicken Soup and Soul books and my devotional books there. And uh, they're going to allow me to sell there. Great. Uh, but it'll be a fun. That'll be a fun thing to do. That will be, yes. And you are allowed to um, sell those books, copies um, in the back of the room, right? So to speak. Exactly. And, and they do ask you, Right. They do ask you to limit it to that because they don't want you to do, um, compete with their online right. sales. Right. But any kind of thing like that where where you're doing a talk or you're you know, doing a book signing, they're fine with it. Stephen James has a new book out on the power of storytelling. It's called um, The Art of the Tale. Um, okay. And I think that's the first thing you see when you go to Chicken Soup for the Soul is that storytelling it's it it has a powerful influence you know and I think it's such a skill set to hone um as you said it's not a Christian publishing company um I I saw where they're very diverse they even have uh you know every ethnicity every religion they published for all of those but um I think for every believer, I think it's such a good thing to take courses and hone the art of storytelling because right. just in casual conversations, then if you become a better storyteller, it, it serves to open doors of opportunities to share what Christ has meant in, mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And so there's great value in that for sure. I often say that, Go ahead. You know, that I often say that Jesus was the master storyteller, and really in his stories, he just talked about everyday things that the people could connect with, and he he I don't know that he ever mentioned God in any of his parables, but they you know they still gleaned from what he said right. that he was talking about deeper things, and so yeah. we can do that with our stories too. Absolutely, and I think you know. Um, Often it's story that prompts a God consciousness in in others. And also, you know, uh, I was saying once that, and I repented, Tracy, but I used to see these little Christian romances and I thought, oh, what is up with that? You know, and then um, I had uh, a client that wrote Christian romance stories and she shared the letters that she got from her readers. I mean, a lot were hard copy mailed and in, in back in the day. And mm -hmm. it was 
testimony after testimony of people saying they had no idea what a godly relationship should look like. They had wow. never, you know, they had gr grown up in broken homes or, you know, were divorced and had known uh, domestic violence and all these things. And that's all they had known. That's all they grew up in. And that's all their circles uh, of friends knew. And so when they read these books, uh, it, it, promote, it prompted a desire in them to know more about the God who created them for this type of relationship. So I just um, have a great respect for that. Although I said recently, Tracy, I still don't understand what the fascination is with Amish romance. <laughs> I mean, I come from an Amish background, but I mean, I never thought there'd be so many people interested in the romantic lives of the Amish. <laughs> <laughs> and it has lasted a while, too. <laughs> oh, we thought it was going to be a flash in the pan uh, when it first happened uh, as in our agency. And then we quickly scrambled and became part of it because, and it's lasted for um you know, over ten, a decade, 10 years, it's lasted longer than we ever expected. And I think it's for the value of the beautiful story, but also simpler times and simpler, you know, it's almost like that escape that you can, uh, we all long for that, the simpler lifestyle, the simpler, you know, slower and, pace. <laughs> and innocence, so, I think. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what, so you, you've, you've been doing this a while and we've shared a little bit about a, um, the um, action, starting with action. Um, is there a tip for an ending? For the um, takeaway, is the takeaway all in the ending, or is it going to spread out? Yeah, usually, I would say usually it is. I would say the takeaway usually happens at the end, but not not always. Um, I have more trouble with endings, Diana, than anything else. So um, my friend uh, Mary Lane says that you need to tie it up with the bow. You need to tie up your story with the bow. It's the gift, your gift to the reader. And so we say that, you know, you need to make sure you tie up any loose ends, anything that you, and of course, you only have 1,200 words. You're not going to have a whole book to tie up uh, things together, but um, you just need to make sure you get everything tied up and just make sure it's a satisfying ending. It needs to be an inspiration. You need to keep in mind, it's an inspirational story, a true inspirational story. And so you want to have trying to remember what it is Chicken Soup used to have on their website. They used to say it needed to end in a result, a positive change, or there was something else that I can't think right, right now what it was. But, you know, some kind of a, a result, positive change, and that's basically your takeaway. You know, that's how it's, how is it going to change the reader's life? As you said, it's all about the readers. And so how is this going to affect the reader? And so that's, I think, the best way to, to end it. Is that That's way good? I'll, the worst thing for me is to read, invest my time in a novel, and then they have this sloppy ending that just leaves you thinking, seriously, what? You know, it it frustrates the heck out of me. And um, so I I think that's great to wrap it up, you know, and and keeping that in mind that it's inspirational. That's definitely important important well we're we're out of time so i want to thank you so you're going to send me the link for your newsletter mm -hmm. and then um remind me of the conference and i'll i'll put all of that information in the comments section tracy okay and sure. also the link to your serious writer course would sure. be would be great as well and I just can't thank you enough because I think it's a wonderful opportunity for so many writers to be able to um, hone their skills, but have their first publishing credit mm -hmm. with 
chicken soup for the soul would be fabulous thing to do. So, all right. all right, before we sign off, I want to remind you, Eddie's on vacation, by the way. I didn't even explain his absence. I'm so sorry. But he just um, reminded me this morning that he was on vacation. And Tracy was gracious to jump in because I've had, I've been wanting to schedule you. So this worked out fabulous. And uh, just remember to like and subscribe. And we're also on YouTube, Reality Coaching for Writers. And we just want to resource and help you become the rest, best writer you can be. So thank you again, Tracy. And we'll sign off now. Have Thanks. a great week, everybody.